Now I'm welcoming to the stage Aaron Bolly from Outer Space Institute and University of British Columbia. And Aaron will be speaking about astronomy, mega constellation, and the International Court of Justice. <laughs> Thank you. Can everyone hear me all right? Excellent, thanks. So uh, I have the pleasure of giving this talk on behalf of my dear friend and colleague, Michael Byers, who's an international lawyer. He and I have a close collaboration together. We've worked on this together. Uh, this is ultimately his uh, brainchild. So today is a, this talk is about possibilities. And I want you to come into it with this idea of what is possible. So we've talked about many different approaches to protecting dark and quiet skies, but we've certainly not talked about all the various options that we have available to us. Some of them are quite powerful options. This is the first time that I'm gonna show you a hockey stick in this talk. This is the satellite hockey stick. And there's no question, there's no surprise to any of you that we're seeing this rapid rise in satellites. That's why we're all here. But despite engaging with companies at length, the, there is progress and I don't wanna dismiss that, but the interference is growing. And where we have, there have been mitigations again by some, and there's been progress with the in industry hub. So that is absolutely wonderful, but I don't think that we will really argue too much that so far things have been largely temporary, insufficient, and not part of the fundamental design process. So as a community, we have indeed sought to inform and influence decisions, including national regulators. We've provided input to domestic courts and we've engaged with the media. But so far, these efforts have not given the desired results. Now, there has been progress once again, but we're still a long way away from where we need to be. The action at Copuis that this body has been a major part of is amazing. And it would be wonderful to continue that approach. And we should keep trying in Copuis. But we know that in 2022, we hit a big roadblock and that the idea of having then an expert working group was ultimately blocked. And that working group would have been a major step forward. Championed by uh, states who've been helping us from the start, as well as very vocal uh, international groups, which we all know and love. And in June, 2023, it was ultimately not adopted because copious works on consensus. As of now, it works on consensus and there's no indication that that's gonna change. So any state can block progress, one state, and it doesn't even need to be on the issue being discussed. It could be for other reasons. So copious is largely paralyzed. But there's a different approach. There are six principal organs of the United Nations. And one of them is the International Court of Justice. Now, the International Court of Justice uh, adjudicates between states, but because the Outer Space Treaty through its Article 6 directly connects national actors to their state, including companies, then a state, for example, that is a major observatory state could then uh, have an action through the ICJ against a state that is a major constellation operator. Now, there are actually two ways to engage the international, or at least two ways to engage the International Court of Justice. One could bring a case to it. One, could, one state could sue another state. And that is by far the more aggressive route. It's also very timely, very costly, both monetarily and political capital. And that is not what we are proposing. What we're proposing instead is an advisory opinion. 
the advisory opinion is legal advice. It is legal advice asked by the United Nations General Assembly, which is another organ of the United Nations. And there have been 27 of these advisory opinions, and they've uh, gone through a very uh, wide breadth of topics. And we will talk about this latter one, the nuclear weapons case, in just a moment. Now, advisory opinions themselves are not binding, but even though they're not binding, they come with incredible authority, and they are part of the process of creating or clarifying international law. And they draw incredible attention. You will not be able to ignore an advisory opinion. So you can go this route because the General Assembly can put forward a vote to communicate to the ICJ then a request for an opinion by a simple majority of those voting states. So there is not a single state that could block this. It is an action that could be taken by just having more states voting for than against the issue. And where there is a lot of disagreement by some very powerful states, they often simply either won't vote or they will agree to a consensus vote in which it's, there is no actual vote for it. It's just agreed. So how do you actually do this? Well, you have to have a state champion, but it's much, much better to have a group of states champion this. And you know, a place to start could be the same place where we've seen help with UN copious. And then following then a favorable vote by the General Assembly, that communication goes to the ICJ. Now, what actually goes to the ICJ? There is a short brief about the topic, and then critically, there are questions. There are no more than two or three questions. They have to be simple. They have to be clear. If you do not meet those criteria, it could completely backfire on you. So you have to be careful in the crafting of those questions. So a major lobbying effort will be needed. And in order to do that, we absolutely have to have the support from the international astronomical community. And both professional and amateur astronomers can help with this. The timeline is about two years. It could be less than that. So this can operate very quickly. And again, it won't, if it's moving forward, it can't be blocked by any single state. So the Outer Space Institute is convening a group of experts from a range of expertise, including international law and those who have experience with the International Court of Justice to create a draft resolution. That draft resolution will then uh, uh, be uh, circulated with very targeted groups for feedback, iterated upon, and then there will be outreach to states. And eventually, the states will take it and go with it if it is to proceed. We get out of this, if it moves forward, an absolutely authoritative assessment of the legal duties owed to states that operate uh, or host observatories by those states that launch mega constellations. And again, it cannot be blocked and it will have extensive legal or extensive public visibility. This is the second hockey stick that I'm showing you today. So there is a case that's going on right now that has a beautiful template for us to follow. And this is the Vanuatu case that's being presented to the International Court of Justice was recently agreed by consensus to communicate two kind of and a half questions to the International uh, Court of Justice. Vanuatu is a, is a state that is experiencing an existential crisis. It is a low line island state. 
it was hit by major hurricanes and already had very large fractions of its GDP wiped out. They may not exist as a nation in the coming decades. And so they have been leading this initiative. Please take a look at it. Please take a look at it carefully. Here is the questions that they put forward. And you can see that there are two questions here probing the obligation of states under international law for the protections of the climate system. And then asking what the obligations of states are if they have destroyed another state through their acts or omission with climate change. So we can create questions using this method as a template. Be very careful with those questions, things that we really want to know, and we'll move the action forward. They've received uh, 130 state support through this, which is ultimately why it was put forward without a vote itself. What can you do to help? Well, you could go ahead and join the mailing list. And as we progress with this through different stages and develop it further, we'll make sure that you know where we are with it, how, is, how it's going. And at some point, we will ask you to be involved with the entire process. And of course, we're very happy to take feedback along the way. So with that, I look forward to your questions and I do hope we keep this in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron, for such an interesting perspective towards the International Court of Justice. And thank you for keeping the time. Uh, we have room for one question. Uh, somebody has a question here. I think there is a person over here. Thank you for this very interesting proposal. I think the constitution of this uh, group of friends of the uh, COPOS people that we will talk about this afternoon, oh, this morning and this afternoon, could be already a core number of states that have this possibility of proceeding that way. So I think that's an excellent opportunity and we'll certainly discuss that this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. And to, to follow up with that, um, I, I agree that this is a, a way, uh, a place to look. Uh, one of the things that the advisory opinion approach can do is it gives powerful states who may want to block it the option just to kind of step back, not support it, knowing that they can't block it, it will still end up going through. So it can be, uh, even though it's a strong option, it's also politically delicate in some ways, so. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Aaron. I think everybody can follow up online or here in person. Thank you.